June 20, and a count of three, we're going to read today and concert. If you are seated, we can ask you to stand. It's our culture and custom to stand for the reading of the word, unless and until you are physically incapacitated. So we indulge you to stand. At the count of three, we're going to read one, two, three. But he beloved, you do not your spouse, on your most holy pray in the Pray in the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. You may be seated. There are two major gifts that were given to us in the Word of God. Firstly, Jesus Christ is a gift that we were given to us. That was given to us. John 3.16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That scripture reveals the intent and the extent of the love of God. The intent was salvation. The extent was the sacrifice of his son. The second major gift that God gave to us is the Holy Spirit. In John 16, Jesus said, uh, it is expedient, expedient that I go away. For if I do not go away, the paracletor will not come. Uh, the Holy Spirit, but he says, I shall pray to the Father, and he will give you the paracletus. Now the paracletus, the word paracletus is a convergence of two words, para and cletus. Para, it means an assistant, an aid, or a helper. That's why you get English words like paramedics, parachutes, pararel something or someone that walks alongside with you. So the second major gift that we're given is the gift of the Holy Spirit. But may I say that all the two major gifts, they came also pregnant with other gifts. Jesus came pregnant with the fivefold ministry. That's why the word of God says the very same one uh, that uh, descended is the one that ascended and he gave gifts unto men. Ephesians 4.11 uh, he gave uh, some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some pastors, uh, evangelists, some pastors, and teachers. Now notice, he never said some teachers, but he said and teachers, because uh, everyone that is part of the five of ministry must have the capacity to teach. Uh, so it's important for us to understand that uh, the fivefold ministry all of it is different assignments. For an example, the apostle gardens, the prophet guide, the evangelist guard the people, the pastor guard the people, and then the teachers ground the people. Did you get that? Right. But now, after the fivefold ministry, the Holy Spirit came, and when he came, he came also with nine gifts or nine manifestations. And those manifestations, they are divided into three categories. Number one, revelation of gifts. Revelation of gifts, they come to reveal God's thoughts and intentions concerning the church and individuals. And under revelation of gifts, we have three gifts, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and descending of spirits. The word descending Discernment, it means a separation, where you are able to separate between the spirit of God and uh, the spirit of the devil. The second category of gifts are what we call power gifts. Power gifts, they uh, cause God to demonstrate his ability. And the other power gifts, we have faith, we have the gifts of healings. Notice the Bible never said that gift of healing, but it said that gift of healings, plural. Because you must understand that there are other men of God that God has anointed that have the ability to raise people from the wheelchairs. And you discover that there are other people also that God has anointed that have the ability to open the blind eyes. So they are all gifted in healings. Say healings. Yes. Number three, there is the gift of the working of miracles. Now notice, it never said the gift of waiting of miracles, but it said of working of miracles. So we don't wait for miracle. 
miracles. We work miracles by faith. The Bible says in the book of Luke 145, there shall be a performance of those things that were believed. So in other words, when you believe in the word of God, what you should wait for is a performance of what you believed. Yeah. And I declare by the spirit of God that whatsoever you have believed in God for this afternoon, the Lord will do it for you. Amen. Number three, we have the gifts of utterance. These gifts, they cause you to say something. Under the gifts of utterance, we have speaking in tongues. Secondly, we have the interpretation of tongues. There is a difference between interpretation of tongues and the translation of tongues. Yeah. Scripture never said it's a gift of translation, but it said it's the gift of interpretation. Now, interpretation is the ability to get the meaning out of a conversation. Translation is explaining each and every word. For example, I will teach you maybe for the next 30 to 45 minutes on the subject of tongues. But when you, you get asked by somebody and they say, what was prophet teaching about? You say he was teaching about tongues. That's what? That's interpretation. It's not translation. Translation, it means that you have to say each and every word that they say. Yeah. Okay. I see that. Yes. And then after that, we have the gift of prophecy. Now, the gift of prophecy is different from the office of a prophet. The gift of prophecy mainly operates based on an atmosphere. But the office of a prophet does not need an atmosphere. It operates independently outside the atmosphere. Yeah. When you wake me up in the morning and you ask me certain things, I'll tell you without me going to pray. Yeah. Because I am in the office of a prophet. I don't have a gift of prophecy. Yeah. You see, a prophet is a gift to the church. Yeah. He does not possess a gift. He is that gift to the church. Yeah. Come on. Come on. So when you see a must celebrate them. Why? Because they are a gift. How you receive the gift says more about what or about how you 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 find the giver of the gift. Yeah. Yeah. I see with you. Yeah. All right. Let's see it further. Now, the Holy Spirit did not only come with nine gifts. He also came with nine fruits. Okay. Because for every there must be a fruit. Yeah. It's imperative that God does not want your character to embarrass your gift. Yeah. Because maturity in the kingdom is not measured by a gift, it's measured by your fruit. Yeah. Now, in the Old Testament, what they used to do, when a priest would enter into the world of holies uh, for the atoning of the sins of Israel, they would tie bells around his garment. And they were supposed to be nine in number. But now those bells were put in his garment so that when he enters the world of holies and he enters with sin, when God kills him, they will know he's dead. Why? Because the bells will stop making noise. Yeah. But now they realize that the bells were making senseless noise. Yeah. So then they put what they call a pomegranate. Each and every bell, they'll put a pomegranate. After every bell, they'll put a pomegranate. Why? The pomegranate is a fruit. And that fruit was supposed to make the bells to be melodious. So that the bells don't make noise, but they make a melodious sound that becomes a praise to God. That's why the Bible says that anyone that prophesies and he lets love is like a noisy symbol. That cannot be heard because they are operating on a gift without love. Because love is a fruit, it's not a gift. So before you prophesy, you must operate by love. Galatians 5.22 Galatians 5.22 But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Is love. Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Continue. Meaning is against such there is no law. When it comes to 
gifts, you have a choice on which gift you should operate in. Yeah. Because Paul said in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not need you to be ignorant. The area you desire is the area the Holy Spirit is going to use you in. Yeah. But when it comes to fruits, we don't desire fruits. It's a must that all of us must have fruits. Yeah. Scripture never said you shall see them by their gifts. It said you shall see them by their fruits. In other words, that highest level that makes us to recognize you spiritually is not the gift that you have, it's the fruit that you possess.
The Bible declares, I want that ye help all speak in tongues, but rather that ye may prophesy. That's a very deep statement there. For greater is he that he prophesieth uh, than he that speaketh in tongues, except ye interpret that the church may receive what? Edifying. That means tongues must be interpreted. Yeah. That's the first level of tongues. The second level of tongues is what we call tongues of men. Now, tongues of men is already, are already a language that is in existence in this world. For example, I remember some years ago, they came Americans uh, from um, America and they came to uh, City Pentecostal Assembly. And when we were there, as we were praying in tongues, a white guy from America started praying in Shona. And he did not know what he was saying. Meanwhile, he was giving a prophecy that was wrong. It's still documented to date. They asked him, what were you saying? He said, I didn't know I was just praying in tongues. So he turned into the tongues of men. When he was able to speak in a, a, speak in a language of men that he was not taught, but that he penetrated through the Spirit of God. Wow. Yeah. I remember sometime mom wanted to buy some stuff for a shop, China City. When we got there, this China lady, uh, Chinese lady, did not know how to speak English. We didn't know how to speak a language. There was no one to help us. So as we are speaking, we discovered that we are frustrating ourselves. All of a sudden, in my mind, I thought I was speaking in English. Meanwhile, I stepped into a room where I was speaking Mandarin. So I spoke to that lady. After that, I saw mom's surprise. She said, Where did you learn this language? I said, Which language? I was speaking. He said, No, you were speaking in your own language. That's why she was understanding you. So we had a conversation to the extent where she laughed. She told me the prices. I, I asked her where I'm coming from in China. She told me everything. But in my mind, I thought it was English. But in the spirit, I stepped into a room when I was speaking Mandarin. Where do you see this in the book of Acts chapter 2? The times in Acts chapter 2 are not the ones that we pray. In the times in Acts chapter 2, the Bible says they were heard speaking in their own language, glorifying God. In other words, when you were a shorter person, you were found having the ability to speak in Tonga when you've never spoken Tonga in your entire life. Come on. Praise the Lord. Amen. Tongues. These ones, they come to edify you. Yeah. Now, the first levels, the first two levels of tongues, the first one, what did we say? Interpretation for prophecy. The second one, what did we say? Tongues of men. The first two, you don't use them willingly. It is the Spirit of God that takes over you to use you right. to communicate. It is only that third one where you can use willingly. Right. That's what we are talking about today. All right. Come on. We are focusing on what? Edification. <laughs> because you must understand you become who you spend time with. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. If your vocabulary is full of vulgar, it's because you are spending time with people that are full of Because every relationship brings an atmosphere. Yeah. Because you always smell like the one that you spend time with. Yeah. The Bible said they looked at the disciples and they saw that they were unnamed men, but they said that they were Jesus. So that means that being with Jesus made them to look like Jesus. Do you know that disciples looked like Jesus to the degree that it needed a man with a kiss to betray him? In other words, they could not tell who was Jesus and who was not because they looked exactly the same. Come on. I still with you. Yes. Someone that has a relationship with a cigarette. Yeah. They don't need to tell you they smoke. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. They smoke to the degree where they become the atmosphere of that cigarette. Yeah. Yeah. The moment they appear, that yeah. 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 Why? Because they carry that atmosphere. Yeah. 
Say I carry an atmosphere. Shall I carry an atmosphere? I carry an atmosphere. When Moses, you see, our generation is a problem. They go at the prayer mountains carrying camera phones. What do you call that one? Imagine I'm kneeling on the floor and I'm saying I'm praying for you. Because the last time I checked, the Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret place. How is it a secret place when you are coming with the camera? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where our prayers nowadays are for posing for pictures, yes. not necessarily for intimacy. Yeah. So their styles when they have each other in prayer. Yeah. 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 When, 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 when the camera is coming towards their direction, they intensify. That's not prayer, that's acting. Because the real prayer, you go to the mountain and you don't even tell people that you're in the mountain. The results they speak for themselves. When Moses was on the mountain, the Bible says his face came shining. He never told people, I'm coming from 40 days prayer and fasting. He appeared and people knew that this man must be the immortal. Yeah. Yeah. So Moses went in the mountain and he came there, his face was shining. Aaron spent time with people. Guess what? He spent time with people and it made him even to change the word that he said. He started selling a calf in 40 days. Because who you spend time with, you become right. Ah. Yeah. Matthew chapter 17, the Bible says when Jesus came from the mountain, yeah. his, 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 his garment was glistering with the glory of God. So when demons were looking at Jesus, they were seeing glory, they were not seeing a man. That means whenever you are coming from a place of prayer, it must be visible in the world of the spirit. You, you, you can pretend to the people that are natural, but spirits cannot be deceived because they know who belongs to God and who does not belong to God. So you can tell even with their tongues that they are modified. <laughs> now every musician is something like the Ophelas in tongues. Who told you that power is in vocabulary? The power of tongues is not in vocabulary. It's in the intimacy behind the tongue. I can say Ranga, Rock, or Paya, and already a dead person right. Why? It's not in grammar, it's not in drama, it is in the power behind the power. What do you want? That's why we claim to be prayerful, yet we are fornicators. We are adulterers. Why? Because we are operating within the realm. Of counter later times that make fire. Why do we need to pray in tongues? Number one, praying in tongues facilitates our intimacy with God. The Bible says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, first Corinthians 42, speaketh unto God and he utters mysteries. That word mystery there, it means a hidden code of operation. Say mystery. mystery. You see, when you visit a couple that have been married for quite some time, they can literally crack a job with each other without them speaking. Yeah. Isn't it what I'm saying? I can't want to talk to you, Jack. Is, is it true what I'm saying? Yes. That more you spend time with, to, together with the person, that more you develop a language beyond words. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 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 If you want to know the availability and the presence of God because of the falling down of demons, you still don't know God. Yeah. Because you must get to a level where you know God without Him speaking or manifesting. Yeah. Where you can tell that texture, the fabric of His presence. Even without him doing anything dramatic. Yeah. Demons are more sensitive 
to God more than other men of God in our time. You find men of God on WhatsApp during the service, yet demons are screaming because demons they know the ancient of that. Am I talking to you? They have met the ancient of days, and there is a man of God that claims to know him, but in his presence they are busy chatting on their cell phones. Interest. Interest. In the place of intimacy is where God shares his burdens with you. And you share your burden with him. How do I know that a man of prayer? I know it by the burdens that you carry. Because the burdens are spiritual, are, 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 are spiritual uh, transactions. What man is in the physical, that's what the spiritual burden is in the spirit. In Ezekiel prophesied and slept on one side for three and a half years. Why? Because he had a burden in his heart. Talk about the prophet Isaiah. He prophesied naked for three and a half years. Why? Because he had a burden in his heart. Talk about a man called Moses. The Bible says he defied the delicacies of Egypt and he chose to suffer with the children of Israel and he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh. Why? Because he had a burden. By the burden that you are carrying in your spirit. How do I know you are immature? Because you don't have a better. Do you know why sometimes you are up, sometimes you are down? It's because you let the burden of prayer. When God infuses a better in the inside of you, there is nothing that can stop you from prayer. That's why the Bible says, Is there anything that can separate us from the love of God? Shall it be hard? Shall it be death? Shall it be angels? It says, No, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Why? Because we are carrying a better. Our generation needs a better. Talk about a man like John. John the apostle, he was put inside the pot of boiling oil. Inside the pot of boiling oil, he was put in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. John, are you not aware that inside this trap that you are in, there is boiling he says, no, I'm not away because my burden is greater than the heat that is coming from the oil. They took joy, put him in the island of Patmos. They took off his eyes. They thought he was blind, but John was here saying, I heard and I saw. How are you seeing, John? Since you are blind, we see by the burdens we carry. A compeller, brekomina kapai, braso tekepai, brekatepeketa. Lord, give me a better. When others are giving up, give me the staying ability. Let me stay in prayer. When others are compromising, let me stay in prayer. Somebody shout, I need a better. I need a better. Because we are demonstrators of the spirit. 
So in other words, when I pray in tongues, Zakopa alepende askopa na akanda ba brando skiva alete brando skeda brakata pash kabonta akata brendi kopati kata rakiro komsa brakati koparata. What am I doing? I am involved in my spirit. I went in the presence of prayer, in the presence of God. Did it? I went in as a cat, but when I come out, I come out as a lion. I'm looking for a problem. I'm looking for cancer. I'm looking for high blood pressure. I'm looking for what used to pursue me. Why? Because I am bold. Yeah. Say, a man by the name Peter was a timid man. He was unstable like a reed. But when he encountered the gift of tongues, he's a man that stood up and said, Oh man, a brethren in Jerusalem, these men are not drunk with wine as you suppose, but they are filled with the Holy Ghost. The Bible says in Peter, and three thousand men came to the kingdom. No microphone, no praise and worship, no ashes, no decon. Why? Because he was emboldened. Wow. Yeah. Do you know why you're afraid of everything? Because you don't pray in times more. Yeah. Praying in times number four, it means to recharge. The same way when you put your phone on the charger, you see the bus going up and down. It's the very same thing that happens to your spirit man when you start praying in tongues. The bars of your of your bars are going up and down. Why you are charging you? Come on. <laughs> My phone. My phone here. The bus is low. There are applications that are on my phone. Yeah. Like taking a video, yeah. playing music. Yeah. But when the battery is low, the applications will not be able to be activated. Yeah. Not because they don't work. Yeah. But because the battery yeah. is low. Yeah. You see, when God created you, He put some applications. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know in the kingdom of darkness? Knowing information about someone is not is not prophecy. It's expected. A witch is not surprised if they know your name. Why? Because they have a soft way. There is a realm of awareness. It's not a realm of prophecy. It's a realm of awareness. In, in the book of Matthew chapter 17, when Elijah and Moses appeared, Peter looked at them and said, that's Elijah, that's Moses. They had never seen them. How did they know? Because when they tapped into that realm, they became aware. Yeah. There is no prophecy in the world of the spirit. Amen. Because everything is naked. Yeah. Yeah. So guess what? The reason why you can't prophesy is not because maybe the gift is not there. But you operating in a level in the degree of that prophecy that you are praying for requires your body to be full. Yeah. Yeah. application that is a high voltage in training of a part and you are on 1%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the principle of charging a phone is that you don't charge your phone while it's in use. Yeah. You damage the battery. Yeah. That's what you have been doing in your spiritual life. Yeah. 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 You are yeah. yeah. trying to manifest that your battery is low uh-huh. and you are also charging. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. How, how do you charge the phone for five minutes and it is full battery? Yeah. So why do you think you can pray only for, for, for ten minutes and you have a full battery? Yeah. Yeah. Why is your phone getting more attention in terms of power supply more than your spirit man is getting attention for God's yeah. yeah. A device. There are functions in do, do you know that you will never know that they are built to, to raise the dead? There are people that will die and when they get to heaven they'll be surprised. Because God will show them this is what you should have done. But guess what? You were too lazy to fill up your batch. Have you ever seen a witch say today I'm tired, I'm not going for witchcraft? So why are you tired to go for prayer? A full time devil, if you're a part time Christian, number four, number three. Why do you need to pray in tongues? Pray in tongues give us the divine perspective. 
it makes us to operate with the lens of God. We see things based on how God sees things, not based on how we want to see things. Yeah. We have the ability to see a petra, a rock in a reed. <laughs> Prophets is the ability to call forth something that does not look qualified in the physical. Yeah. It's the ability to call an apostle out of a fisherman. That's prophecy. Amen. Prophecy and prediction are two different things. Right. Prediction is based on a track record okay. of a history. Okay. Okay. If I see that you are intelligent, I can predict that maybe by the time you write your own levels, you will make it. But prophecy is telling somebody that is in the last class and tell them you come out with 11 A's. Because prophecy calls things that are not as though they are. I'm teaching them. Say divine perspective. When you are operating and you are pretense, when others are seeing Goliath, you are seeing a promotion in the palace. When others were saying, this man has never been defeated, then he was asking, what shall be given to a man that defeat this child? Sir, David was not a youth, he was not even a man, he was a boy, but he was asking the question of man. It was a boy because manhood is not a function of the sexual organ, it's a function of responsibility. The perspective of God. God is the only one that can look at a man who's 100 years old and a wife that is 90 years old and tell them you shall be the father of many nations. It takes a certain level of insanity to believe that prophetic word. But the Bible says Abraham started not in the promise of God. Yeah. He considered him faithful that promised him. Yeah. Yeah. Am I wasting the time? No. Yeah. Yeah. The divine perspective of God. If I'm asking you right now, do you know if you are living in a plane, there are no mountains. Yeah. If you have ever been in an aeroplane, everything is flat yeah. when you're looking from above. Yeah. But when you are down here, there are mountains. Yeah. That means your per- perception is determined by the level of where you are operating from. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know why you're seeing problems? It's where you are operating from. Yeah. Number four, what we need to pray to us, it gives you the ability to tell you to the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God, Sophia, the wisdom of God. Glory to God. Wisdom is knowing what you need to do when you don't know what you need to do. Wisdom. Give it the Spirit of God. Most of, of the believers they go for power, not for wisdom. But God did not create the world by power, He created the world by wisdom. Proverbs chapter number three, at, at, uh, uh, Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, it says that by wisdom, where the earth was the earth founded, not by power. Because wisdom is superior to power. Yet, as believers, we need both wisdom and power. Egypt responds to power, but we don't respond to wisdom. The Greeks, they respond to wisdom. The Jews, they respond to power. That means we need both worlds. You cannot be an Elijah and not be a Solomon. Come on. That's why there's no book of Elijah. You are a man of power, but there's no book of Elijah. But there are three books of Solomon. Why? Because he was a representation of wisdom. Most of us here, we are praying for power. Power will give you the position, but wisdom will sustain you in the position. Joseph did not become a governor in Egypt because of power. He became a governor in Egypt because of wisdom. He had a 14 year plan in less than 3 hours. 14 year plan. And here you are, you're a child of God. You, 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 you don't have a plan for a day. If I ask you tomorrow what you are doing, you say, I believe in God. What are you believing in God for? The Bible says that preparation of the host belongs to a man, but victory belongs to the Lord. In other words, there are things that you must do and there are things that God must do. I'm 
teaching better than you hear me. I say, yeah. Why was Paul the apostle? Second to Jesus in terms of impact. It was because he was a man that prayed in tongues more than anyone else. He said to the church in Corinth, I pray in tongues more than all of you. One person asked me a question and said, Man of God, uh, why didn't Jesus pray in tongues? I said, The word praying in tongues, tongues are the mystery. Because the Bible says, Whosoever prayed in tongues, your tongues, he is speaking to God, act as mysteries. And before God and Jesus, there were no secrets, there were no mysteries, so there were no reason for tongues. I see that. I see that. Yeah. After mysteries. After mysteries. Look at your neighbor and say, Pray. Paul wrote 14 books of the New Testament. How many books? 14. 14. Do you know Peter ate the Holy Communion with Jesus? Yet still he did not understand what it was. Because he did not even write to tell us about the Holy Communion in the book of Peter. It was Paul that told us the mystery of the Holy Communion. He says, I know not Christ after the flesh, but I know him after the spirit. He said, oh, are you still with me here? Come on. He says, I was not disobedient of the heaven because him. He says, I have not known Christ after the flesh, but I have known him after the spirit. He never walked with him in the physical, yet he had no revelation about him. He said, I know of a man, whether in the flesh or in the spirit, that you don't tell. He was caught up in the dead heaven. In other words, he had gone to the first and second until he got to the dead. So it's not only Enoch that tells him to the realms of the heavens. Talk, talk to Paul. He says, I had things that were not allowed for to be said to man. So there are conversations in the spirit that are beyond the human understanding. Paul is the one that wrote about. Do you know the book of 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, was written to Babs? Read 1 Corinthians chapter 3. He says, I don't write to you as much as I write to you as unto Babs. So everything I read from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 to chapter 2, all of it was written for Sunday school. For Babs. He says, to those that are mature, we speak wisdom. <laughs> we speak wisdom. I was, I was still here. Yeah. Number five. Why do you need to pray in tongues? Because it strengthens your faith. June 20, the Bible said, Build in yourself in the most holy faith. Pray in the, in the Holy Ghost. What does, it, what does that mean? What does that mean? And when you continue, it says, Build up and building up yourselves on your most holy faith. So when you are praying in tongues, you are building your most holy faith. John chapter. Uh, 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 Oh, no, 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 no. Romans 10 17. Pardon me. Romans 10 17. So then faith cometh by here. Look at the scripture. Look at the scripture. I need to explain something. Stop writing. Look at the scripture. Faith cometh by here. Faith cometh by here. Anything that comes is a source. And the fact that it's coming means it's more by. And anything mobile that comes to you is the ability to leave you. Faith can leave. Faith can come. And he said by hearing the word of God, he never said by having heard. Hearing is present continuous. That means you must hear the word of today to develop the faith of today. The word of yesterday does not develop the faith of today. It is the word of today that develops the faith of today. But the faith comes by hearing. Now talk to me, church. It comes by hearing. It's released by speaking. It's strengthened by praying in tongues. The Bible says, Having the same spirit of faith, I believe, therefore I spoke. <laughs> But how to strengthen your faith? Sako pra adekanis, pra diko skipa la hankra diska pa, pra pleo se, pra no skipa, pra pleo konsa brenda aski pa ante konta pra tala adebeha, pra pleo konsa pa, pra pleo o pra disko pa ante ena kia so pra diska da, pra pleo konta pra ante konsi ena konte konka kaka tamba ante ka, 
Randong kongko lindang ganda Nipo dapat kandongko nana Shangku kundang gandeke What are you talking about? The Bible talks about diversities of times When you don't go out of us See, get it, 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 get it Hey! Why are you not mature?
pray the perfect will of God. Right. Romans 8, 26. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helped our infirmities. Right? Yeah. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Yeah. It never said we do not know how to pray. He said we don't know what to pray for. There's a difference. So you might know how to pray, but you don't know what to pray for. Why? Because your life is not in your hands, it's in his hands. So what does it mean? You might pray for a wrong thing in the right time. Here you are praying for a job. Meanwhile, the Holy Spirit knows that in the next one hour you're going to have an accident that will leave you paralyzed for the next six months. So praying in tongues is stepping into the accurate will of God. The Bible says this is the confidence that we have in Him. That whatsoever we ask in His will, He should do it. Come on. So how do we pray His will? Pray in the word of God. How do we pray His will? Pray in tongues. The Bible says, who knows the heart of the man except the spirit in a man? <laughs> that means your spirit is what we call advanced information. There are times when I, I'm, I'm praying and I'm praying and I'm praying and I don't even know what to pray for, but I continue in times. The more I continue, the more the Holy Spirit breathes and He tells me what to pray for. And now I begin to have subjects to pray for. Now I'm praying for that. Now, pray. and, and, and the moment I finish praying, I pick up the phone and I call them. I said, the Holy Spirit just put in my heart. Are you okay? Say, man of God, you don't know. I almost died. The moment I started praying in tongues, that's the moment the Holy Spirit used me to intercede for that particular person. And they survived an accident. Why? Because praying in tongues made me to pray the perfect will of God. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Praying in tongues, it refreshes your spirit in your soul. Isaiah 28 verse 11 through 12. I will not explain that because of time. It refreshes your what? He says, For with stammering lips, another time will he speak to his people. Ah, go down. To whom he said, This is the rest. So praying in tongues gives you spiritual rest. And it may cause the weary to rest. And yeah, with stammering time. I receive the rest. The rest are what you get along. The rest which you peace. You don't keep any rest in my part of the world. Let's speak. You don't take my stand with the one I'm next to you. Yeah. Am I saying the truth here? Yeah. You don't have any peace in your corner in your heart. That you can't explain. Yeah. Am I preaching here? Yes. And then, is it number nine? Yes. Number eight. Praying in tongues mortifies the deeds of the, the, deed of the flesh. If you have character faults, flaws, you have a problem with lust, masturbation, pornography, the more you genuinely spend time in prayer, in tongues, when I say genuinely, you see that day of tongues, that tongues can also come from memory, not from your spirit. <laughs> Because you're used to praying in tongues, so you just say, bah, 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 re, 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 bah, 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 but you know initially that you're not engaged. Yeah. Real tongues is when your spirit, your soul, and your body are one. Yeah. The Bible says, a dark minded man shall not receive anything from the Lord. Yeah. For it's like the wave of the sea that destroys it to end from. God said, when two or three are gathered, they are there. So God is only there when, you, when two or three are gathered. It's not only talking about now. It's also talking about you. Because you have spirit, you have a soul, and you have a body. Yeah. When your spirit, your soul, and your body are one. Yeah. Wow. 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 You can generate spiritual power and electricity to a degree that five minutes with a genuine prayer is too powerful. Yeah. You can hear me. Yeah. You know, most of you spend three hours in prayer, but in essence, in heaven, you've prayed five minutes. Yeah. Why? Because five minutes, that's the only time you were engaged in prayer. 
the rest you were distracted. God says they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far away. Proverbs 4, my son, give me your heart. So when you are praying, God considers your heart before he, goes, he listens to your vocabulary. Some of you, your heart is empty and you're full of vocabulary. That's not coming from heart. Yeah. The Bible says Elijah was a subject to men, was a subject to passions like me. But he prayed the endlessly away from the heart. Prayer is not what you say with your mouth. Prayer is what comes from your heart through your mouth. That's the natural of the shower was People tell you what not to do. Pastors teach you how to live. The Holy Spirit helps you how to live. People tell you, don't do this. But they make their ability to teach you how not to do it. A pastor comes and he teaches you how not to do it. But it takes the Holy Spirit to teach you. How to stop it? He helps you. He helps you. He helps you. Ephesians chapter 3, the Bible says, being strengthened in your inner man. The fact that the Bible says being strengthened, it means you can be weak in your inner man. The Bible says being strengthened. What does it mean? It means being enabled. Being empowered. The same way you put a terrible charger on a car that is performing. Spirit is enhanced. That's the very same way the Spirit of God comes to enable you. I'm preaching right now. But after preaching, my voice will still be okay because I've been amplified. Helping me to project my voice. Imagine preaching to all of you. First sentence, this is my third sentence. We are coming from Kumalo branch. This is our third sentence. And after here, I'm going to another sentence. But I'll still be fresh. Why? It's not my power. Yeah. But I'm not a crash. How do you say if there are good engineers on their feet? Yes. 